to the US election and a remarkable document that's just been leaked that tells you which of the two candidates scares Iran most. Is it Kamala Harris? Of course, that's a joke. Uh, which of the leaders of the tyrannies now joining forces in the war you see now against democracies like Ukraine and Israel, soon Taiwan, which of them really would be scared of Kamala Harris? I mean, Iran's Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, China's Xi Jinping, Russia's Vladimir Putin, as if. No, and now that is confirmed in a document prepared for Iran's supreme leader that's now been leaked uh, but to the Daily Telegraph in, in London, a document warning that Trump is the front runner in the election next month, and it calls him a particular threat because he could put, quote, maximum pressure on Iran to loosen its control on the Middle East. Now, as you probably know, Iran has been arming and funding the terrorist groups that are now attacking Israel including Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, who just yesterday, all three, launched missile attacks on Israel on the anniversary of the October 7 massacre, with some hitting the city of Haifa. Joining me is Sean Spicer, the first White House spokesman of President Donald Trump. Sean Spicer, great to see you again. Look, it's so strange, isn't it, that Democrats keep claiming that Donald Trump cuddles up to dictators, but here we've got a dictator who's scared that Trump will be elected president next month. Should he be? Yeah, the world should be scared. I mean, look, the funny part about this, and Democrats don't like to look at the evidence, but during the four years of, pres of Donald Trump's presidency, Andrew, and you and I have talked about this before, the world was stable. The world was stable. Ukraine didn't invade or annex territory for four years. They did it in a bipartisan gotcha. fashion previous to him, right? Iran wasn't provocative the way they are now, North Korea, China. Um, it's, it's amazing how the guy, Joe Biden, who was supposed to be the adult who was gonna restore all these relationships, all this happens under his watch. None of it happened under Donald Trump's watch. Maybe they were feel for, fearful of him. Maybe they were scared of him. Maybe they thought he was nuts. I don't really care. The world was safer and more stable, and that's what matters. But to your point, yeah, it's funny how the narrative by the Democrats is he sucks up to him. But when you find out what the Dem what these dictators think behind closed doors, they're worried about him. They're scared of him. Uh, he puts fear into them. And I like that. Well, I think uh, the administration's attitude to uh, the policies towards Iran have been disastrously weak, of course. There's a flip side of this, though, right, Andrew? Right. They they, they love to talk about what Donald Trump thinks of them. But look at what they think of this administration. They're willing to act with impunity, right? They don't look to the U.S. to worry about uh, recriminations or retaliation or sanctions. They act with impunity. Like, you haven't seen Iran care about what its response would do to upset the United States. They care about what Donald Trump will do. But they act with impunity. And that's not just them. I mean, Putin looked at what Biden did coming out of Afghanistan and said, I'm going to go get what I can out of Ukraine now. It was because of the weakness and the fecklessness of their policies that they acted the way that they did. To uh, switching back to uh, the domestic politics, uh, Donald Trump's wife, Melania, she's been virtually invisible in this election campaign, Sean. I mean, she turned up uh, to the Republican convention for a couple of days, et cetera, et cetera. But not much, really. It's incredible. But she did give an interview a couple of days ago and actually said she supported abortion, which is not exactly Donald Trump's message to conservatives. Here she is. He knew my position and my beliefs since the day we met. Uh, and uh, I believe in uh, individual freedom. I want to decide what I want to do with my body. I think uh, I don't want government in my personal business. I think it's very important. Sean Spicer, how yeah. does that play out? You know, the initial reaction from a lot of people was exactly what yours was, which is, gosh, this is off message, isn't it? But, you know, I've watched Donald and Melania Trump. They, they are partners. She gives amazing advice to him. And I started to realize that we just got played, Andrew. 
they knew exactly what they were doing. You don't think that she knew that the timing of this was going to be an issue when she put it in her book, when she did the promotion for her book, that this issue, as sensitive as it was, wasn't going to cause a problem. And that's why if you really think about it and think about how close they are and how much they strategize together, I would posit to you that this was intentional. This was him allowing her to show his her side of it to say, hey, I've got people around me that believe in this. And, and so this was a signal to a lot of women out there uh, where this is a major issue that, hey, look, there are women around Donald Trump that love him, that think he's a great person, uh, that want him to be president, but don't share all of his views. And that's OK. It was almost as if it was a signal to a lot of women where abortion has become a big issue that the, the Harris campaign is messaging to, to say, you know, look, there are strong, confident women around Donald Trump that don't share all of his views, and they still support him and they still love him. It's okay to vote for him. Don't believe the Harris hype. I totally buy your read. In fact, I would even add that uh, it, it helps him negate the scare campaign that, you know, that uh, there'd be no abortions whatsoever in, in the whole United States uh, right. if he was uh, elected. Once again, we've all been played. They are so masterful at, at communicating and marketing that we all initially, I think, had the same reaction, like, wow, this is poor timing. This isn't it. When, in fact, as I, as I said, I believe this was entirely intentional. And if you think about it from a practical standpoint, I don't share that view. Obviously, I'm very pro-life. Uh, but I think from a political standpoint, they knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah, but what what's intriguing me with your analysis here is something that I think a lot of people will find, you know, it's it's new to them. You said they're very close. A, 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 you know, a thought has developed that maybe they aren't, that she's shunning him, she's not involved in his campaign, uh, she keeps herself way out of that, that the, it isn't close, but you're saying something very different. Oh, if I if there is one person in the world whose opinion I think matters most to him, it's it's Mrs. Trump. He he values her opinion. She has a brilliant strategic mind and sense of politics. She's a vociferous vociferous reader of politics. I mean, I'm telling you, if there's one person you don't want to get on the wrong side of, it's Melania Trump. She's her opinion is valued and taken very seriously by the former president, and she would never do anything to undermine him. That's why I'm saying I believe that this was extremely intentional and well played. I mean, they knew exactly what they were doing, but I have seen them up close. I have had dinner with them. I have been you know, in briefings with them. He looks to her uh, to, to gay, to, as a very strong sense of, of politics and of him and of his image and of his brand. She, she really protects it. Um, and even if, if you read that book, she talks about how much she, she loves him. Uh, so don't read her lack of presence at debates and rallies uh, as her not being 100 percent supportive of him and being a unbelievably important advisor in, in what he says and does. Sean Spicer, always fascinating to talk to you. Thank you so much indeed for your time. As always, Andrew, see you soon.